Positional cloning with chromosomal locking is a method used to find a gene coding for a specific phenotype by locating its position in the genome. Positional cloning requires mutations in the gene of interest and does not require knowledge of the protein product. The goal is to identify fragments of chromosomal DNA or genomic DNA within the coding region of the gene. This kind of cloning is used to identify the mutation responsible for a known phenotype and to find the protein that is mutated in this phenotype. We know that a certain piece of DNA is transcribed into mRNA in order to be translated into a protein. By expressing this protein, a certain phenotype is also expressed. We, if we know the DNA coding for a flower, we can transcribe it into its mRNA equivalent and translate it into a flower. This flower has an impact on the overall organism or environment. Its phenotype is bringing good smell, making the bees happy, and keeping a healthy ecosystem. In a situation where positional cloning is used, we know the phenotype of a mutation in the gene. From experimenting with organisms with the mutation, we can sometimes deduce what kind of protein is related to the phenotype. However, we do not know the DNA or mRNA code for this protein. The first gene to be cloned using positional cloning was the shaker gene. Researchers observed that a line of anesthetized fruit flies, Drosophila, showed abnormal movement. Under ether anesthesia, the fly's legs would shake, hence the name shaker. After experiments to determine the potential cause of the shaking, they found that potassium currents were abnormal in the shaker flies. This led them to hypothesize that a mutation occurred in the locus coding for a potassium channel. To confirm this hypothesis, the researcher decided to clone the shaker gene. They wanted to find the DNA code for the protein causing the phenotype and express this code in engineered flies to see if the mutant protein identified indeed caused the shaker phenotype. Let's go help them. We start with genetic mapping to pinpoint the chromosomal location of the mutation as precisely as can be done by genetic crosses, cytogenesis, and physical mapping. Then we need to clone for an already known piece of genomic DNA from a location as near as possible to the suspected gene. We thus take a fly from the shaker group and breed it with a fly that has a specific phenotype with a known genotype and that has a high recombination frequency with that gene. For instance, we know the gene coding for the ruby eyes phenotype. Thus, we take flies with ruby eyes and breed them with the shaker flies. The resulting offspring has both the known gene and the mutation, the mistake word. We then create genomic libraries from these ruby eyed shaker flies. Two or more restriction enzymes, or enzymatic scissors, are chosen to cut the shaker fly's genome in pieces of different sizes. For example, enzyme ECOR1 will cut the genome at every GAATTC restriction site, while HIND3 cuts at every AAGCTT restriction site. The two enzymes cut at different areas, thus creating pieces of various lengths. Using ECOR1, we create the genomic library A by cutting every GAATTC restriction site, and we use HIND3 to make genomic library B by cutting at every AAGCTT restriction site. These genomic libraries have the full fruit fly genome. The sole difference is that they are divided differently. The genomic libraries are similar to how two different editors may divide the same book into chapters differently. These genomic libraries containing introns, all the nonsense pages, the ads, are part of the chunks even though they are non-coding. Each of these chunks is put in a vector. Segments similar to envelopes to protect a book's pages. These vectors are then given to viruses, the mail carriers that can deliver the chunks to readers, bacteria. These bacteria, now each infected with a particular chunk of the genomic library and information to make more viruses carrying that chunk, grow and make more viruses carrying the chunk. The bacteria release the viruses containing vectors by exploding. The sites of these explosions are called plaques. We then test for complementary binding with the probes for our known gene, the ruby eyes gene. These probes are usually made to have a fluorescent or dark reaction when the complementary binding occurs. When the probe binds to our known gene, the visual reaction occurs and we are able to collect the surviving bacteria of that plaque. When those bacteria containing our known gene portion have been identified in library A, the process of chromosomal walking can begin. First, the portion containing the known gene is sequenced from library A. We then focus on the end of the sequence and make a probe against this portion. This probe is used to search for the sequence in library B. Remember, this library has been given to bacteria on a different plate. When the probe binds and a match is found, the found piece is sequenced and we use its end to once again make a probe which we test for back in library A. Repeating these steps back and forth between library A and B is the basis of chromosomal walking. Mm -hmm. By repeated cloning of overlapping genomic DNA fragments, one gradually walks across the chromosome from the known starting point until the heights of mutations are passed. The walk may be hundreds of thousands of base pairs long.
As we walk and get sequencing results, we can look for open reading frames, which are sequences that encode a gene. In our analogy, it is the part of the chunk that contains an article. If no reading frames are found, the chromosome walking continues. This process is repeated many times until an open reading frame is found. We might walk through several open reading frames before we find one that seems to match the characteristic of the protein that is looked for. If it does seem to be a gene of interest, the gene is heterologously expressed so that we can characterize the protein it encodes. Once the protein is expressed, tests are run to determine how a malformation in the protein can result in the phenotype shaker flies. In summary, positional cloning with chromosomal walking is carried out by the following steps. One, finding a known gene that is closest to our mutated gene. Two making different genomic libraries using a restriction enzyme. Three, putting the libraries into vectors, viruses, and bacteria. Four, testing for complementary binding with our known gene. Five, sequencing the found complementary chunk to begin chromosomal walking. Six, find an open reading frame matching our suspected protein. Seven, carry out heterologous expression to test whether the suspected open reading frame encodes the gene of interest. We owe the discovery of this technique to Diane Papazina and Associates. Positional cloning can take several years to be finalized, but it is sometimes the only way to find the gene to a corresponding phenotype.